What's up guys, it's Matt with bleepinjeep.com and today we're installing the tie rod ends for the uh, full hydro steering. Now I kind of started this video previously in a video entitled uh, how, to, how to build a uh, robotic welder or something like that. So um, we're going to finish up in this video and install these tie rod ends. We're also using these uh, high misalignment spacers from TMR. But uh, before we get started, I wanted to show you what a uh, misalignment spacer is and what it does. So let's take a look. So let's have a little lesson here. This is a Heim joint. And uh, we use these for a lot of things, suspension and uh, steering. Anytime you need something to uh, pivot, move back and forth, whatever. All right, so what they make is these high misalignment spacers. Uh, and these add more flex or more... Uh, pivoting, I guess you could say, to the heim joints. Now, if you take a look at, uh, let's say, let's say that you were to use uh, spacers. This is a heim joint with spacers on it. It only goes so far before it bottoms out, right here on that spacer. So, what they do with the high misalignment spacers, they cut them in a way that um, you use a smaller bolt, and then you put this high misalignment spacer in there, and it's cut so that it gives you more range of motion. So if you look at the difference here, you can see that this one bottoms out here, this one with the high misalignment has a lot more movement to it. Um, it also makes it a little stronger because now these are one with that ball in the middle, whereas these are just moving around. Um, so another thing is, if you weren't uh, able to use spacers at all, let's say you were just to clamp this between a uh, piece of metal, you wouldn't be able to move but, you know, maybe an eighth inch to the side. So, uh, with these, you can have a lot of movement. And these particular ones are stainless steel from TMR Customs, so you can get those at tmrcustoms.com. Um, these are the actually the wide high misalignment spacers. They make two versions. Uh, one is about this tall. This one is a lot taller, um, just, just depending on, you know, where you're putting it and how, how wide your uh, gap is between uh, your brackets. Alright, so here's an actual example where a uh, Heim joint is in between two brackets. You'll see that it doesn't have hardly any movement at all. And here is the high misalignment spacers and it's got a ton of movement up and down. Now in this case we don't actually need movement. Uh, we don't need high misalignment spacers but I'm using those as spacers. Um, just because they look a lot nicer, they make it stronger, and we need to space this out because I need to get this heim joint right in the middle here, actually a little bit above the middle. So uh, in this case we're just using those as spacers. We don't actually need this to move up and down. So let me show you how I figured out the height. So I took the measurement over here of the height. I forget what it is right now. And basically we're trying to match that over here. The problem is when you're over, when you're turned to the right and when you're turned to the left, there's this pivots at an angle. So it's a lot different between here and here. So what I did was I took the height of this on the, uh, on the inside, which is that red mark. I took the height from over here on the outside, which is the bottom red mark. And then right in the middle is that blue line. So Theoretically, that's where we want the heim joint to be, is right there on that blue line, because that's right in the middle of the movement, which will match up to this side over here. So when it's, when it's uh, high, when it's low, when it's in the middle, it'll be perfectly lined up with this side. So I figured that this needs to be all the way up on here. Um, for right now, I'm just gonna add some washers onto the bottom. Later on, I'll probably make a little spacer to get that exact. So that's, uh, I could probably get one more washer in there. Let's see. All right, so that's close enough right now. There's a little movement in there, but I'll make a custom spacer for that. So now, I need to kind of get this in the middle. I want to back it off a little bit. That way you have room to go uh, in or out if you turn this, it'll adjust your, uh, you know, your toe in and out, your tires. 
so I want to have that in the middle so that it's not all the way out and I can only go one direction. You want to put it in the middle so that you can go either direction, in or out. Now I need to determine the length that I'm going to make these things. So to do that, I'm going to use the short end because I don't know where the stop is on the outside, but I do know where the stop is on the inside. It's right there. So I need to push this ram over. To do that, I need to open up the valves here so that it can let the air out. Now I'll push this all the way over. Come on. All right, I can hear it hit the stop there. So that is the short side. And that's where I need to cut it. Right there. I'm going to mark a line right here and this is where I'll cut it so that I can weld it all together. Now it doesn't need to be exact, it just needs to be close, but uh, you want to get it pretty dang close so that uh, it's not completely out of whack, but it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Because we'll have some, some play in or out once we get all that welded together just by turning it, rotating it. Now let's make sure it's square by using a sander to square it up. I want to take into account though this weld on here, so I'm going to put this piece on here to stand it off. I measured it again just to make sure. Now let's uh, weld it up using our robo welder and our foot pedal that we made in the last video. Let's see if we can get it to work good. Well, other than a fire, I think that looks uh, pretty good. That time I used uh, I used some of this nozzle gel inside there because on the previous times I had gotten some splatter on the threads in there. So this is supposed to keep that from uh, sticking. So hopefully that worked. Alright, there it is guys. I've done the other side the same way. Everything turned out really good. I'm very happy with it. It's getting kind of smoky in here, so I'll finish up tomorrow, but I need to uh, find another spacer. I don't like the washers down here. I just don't like the way that looks, but uh, I'll figure that out. Take a look at the whole thing. There it is. So that's turned all the way to the right. Let's see if I can... Turn it to the left, that's to the left, and that's about the middle right there. The uh, passenger side link is probably a half inch shorter. Uh, that's because I had to mount the ram a about a half inch to the passenger side just to make it fit, but uh, everything else uh, looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. I don't think you can really tell that one's shorter than the other. So. Uh, it looks awesome. So thanks for watching. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Check out the website, bleepinjeep.com. We've got t-shirts, hats, uh, all kinds of great stuff for you there, stickers. We're also doing uh, gearboxes now, so if you're interested in uh, porting your gearbox for Hydro Assist, uh, check that out at bleepinjeep.com. We'll see you.